Redditors who grew up with strict parents, what was the craziest rule or punishment you had to deal with? When I was in first grade, I had a writing homework assignment. My dad used to be weird about me erasing because he wanted me to do it right the first time. I ended up erasing a lot on this homework and my dad took the paper from me, ripped it in half, and told me to start over. Turns out it was the last sheet of paper in the entire house. And I don't remember why, but for some reason we couldn't go and buy more paper that night. So ironically, I ended up having to completely erase an old homework assignment in order to have a sheet of paper to start over on. I'm 22 now and still give him crap about this. How is starting over on a new piece of paper any different than erasing what you were already doing? I don't really understand the logic on this one. The word disgusting was banned and could have been considered just as bad as saying the F word. We weren't allowed to close doors unless we were in the bathroom. We weren't allowed to watch Cartoon Network because it was garbage. They actually put a parental lock on Cartoon Network. The worst punishment was one time they decided that we were such bad kids, my sister was like 14 and I was 12-ish, that they took everything we owned and banged it up into garbage bags and made us carry them out to a burn pile and they burnt everything we owned. All of my childhood memorabilia, pictures, clothes, diaries, everything. All of it burnt. It was kind of messed up. When it was done burning, the next day or so later, my sister and I looked through the ashes, and all that was left were two silver rings of hers that we cleaned off and kept. It was kind of crazy. I once got beaten and locked in the basement because my hands were literally not large enough to play a certain piano piece. I couldn't play an octave separation yet. Before you ask, yes, I am Asian. I didn't ask, but makes sense. I wasn't allowed to use public restrooms. I ruined our Disney trip because of how many times we had to go back to the hotel, which wasn't on site. And I was six years old at the time. I quite honestly had accidents when I was far too old to do so because my parents had my teachers reporting bathroom use to them too. There was no place I could safely use the restroom, other than home, without getting into trouble that is. Finally, I got to use public restrooms without punishment when I went to college. No, I'm not kidding, but I got pretty good at hiding restroom use in high school because the high school refused to report it to my parents. Why did none of these teachers spot the abuse? My parents once grounded me for two years for getting a B on my report card, took everything out of my room besides the bed, and I wasn't allowed to do anything with friends. A year and a half into it, I asked if I could be ungrounded, and at that point they had actually forgotten what they'd grounded me for, but refused because I must have done something bad if they grounded me. Also, they refused to let me stay up past 8pm, even in high school. If it's not important enough for you to remember, then it's not important enough to take away all of your kids' stuff for two whole years. When I was in elementary school at about six years old, I used to have accidents because my bladder was too small. My mom would punch me in the bladder when I got home to make me pee myself and make fun of me when I did. I still have issues and it turns out that my bladder and uterus is messed up from a genetic disease. That's actually just messed up. No talking at the dinner table other than the occasional do you want some more blank or pass the blank. We couldn't talk about anything at all. No small or idle chat was allowed. First time you did it, you got yelled at. Second time was a whooping and then sent to your room until the next day, without the rest of your meal. I make it a point now with my kids to chat up a storm each and every meal. You could earn a full-on whooping for uttering any of the following. Shut up, but or accusing someone of lying for any reason. We were not permitted to use the words lie, liar, or lying. Instead, we had to say, that's not the truth, or that doesn't sound right, or any other phraseology that wasn't some iteration of the word lie. This sounds like there's some deeper damage going on in your parents' psyche around the word lie. Otherwise, I don't see why they'd be so sensitive about the word. As the eldest son of a Southern Baptist preacher, I was held to some high standards. Being seen and not heard, and that my every action was a reflection of my father as a leader to his congregation. I found music to be a great outlet, but of course any non-Christian music was not allowed and immediately destroyed upon discovery. Spare the rod, spoil the child was a mantra ingrained in my daily life. Once I was into my teens and spankings with stretched out coat hangers was no longer enough to be considered punishment due to the lack of tears, my father moved on to shaving my head. Nothing like the constant reminder of how untrustworthy one is once their physical source of personal identity is forcibly removed. As soon as you said Southern Baptist preacher, I knew this was going to be bad. 
My mother is an honest-to-God narcissist. I graduated from high school early at 16 and didn't go to college immediately, so I worked a part-time job while all my friends went to school. Anyways, when all my friends graduated high school, we celebrated by going to the movies. My friend's mom dropped us off and another friend's father was going to be picking us up. My mom was very upset at me going to the movie anyways since it wasn't going to be over until after 9pm, by bedtime at the time. Anyways, finally she lets me go on the condition that my friend's dad gets me home by 10 p.m. My friend's father ran into late night construction on the way home with me and several other friends in the van, and the closer it got to 10 p.m., the more I started freaking out, telling everyone I was going to be in huge trouble if I didn't get home like right now. My friend's father assured me he would speak to my mom and all would be fine. I was the first to be dropped off because I was panicking so severely. The moment the van pulls into the driveway, my mom comes barreling out of the house, telling me she was going to kick my butt for being late and keeping her up. My friend's dad tried to calm her down and separate her from hitting me. That's when she realizes I'm chewing gum. Now, my mother hated gum, said the only reason you would ever chew gum was to hide something. So naturally, she makes the assumption I was late in chewing gum because I was busy fooling around with my friend's dad. Yeah, that was the only explanation in her mind. She grounded me for 12 weeks, an entire summer. I wasn't allowed to have a phone, cell phone, TV, or books the entire summer. Every morning, my mom would take the cable box, home phone handset, and keyboard to make sure I couldn't do anything. Needless to say, my friends never invited me anywhere again in fear that my mom would call the cops and accuse me of fooling around with their dad. She also used to report my car stolen if I didn't call her back when I was in college. Uh, what's going on with your mom that that's the first thing that her mind goes to? Who does she think you are? Shouldn't she be more confident in how she raised you? I dealt with a narcissistic and abusive mother and most of my punishments weren't huge because I was a really good kid. But on my 18th birthday, because I asked for gas money the day before, the first time ever, she took mine and her car keys with her to work and took the shed key so I couldn't even ride my bike. She left a note on the kitchen table saying, happy 18th, now you're an adult so get out of my house. I spend my birthday alone, trapped and miserable, all over $10. One day, the news said the school might be closed for a cold day. Like a snow day, but when it's cold enough, your exposed skin freezes in less than 10 minutes. My mom demanded I start walking to school or she'd report me to the cops as truant. We argued about it, but the TV said school started late that day. I decided to go anyways that being better than the arguing. She then decided I was to stay home for her to call the cops. I shoved past her, which she yelled at me was assault, and then locked me out of the house. Halfway to school, I was told the school was closed. I had to call my dad to be let into the house again. That day, I promised myself I'd leave home as soon as possible. I've stayed halfway across the country from my mom ever since. Your mom sounds like the type of person that's just looking for and wants to start problems. I don't blame you for wanting to get out of there as soon as possible. My mom was raised in a very strict and abusive environment. When my sister and I became teenagers, she was struggling with mental health issues and also never had a good example of what level-headed parenting looked like. It doesn't excuse some of the things she did, but I'm more understanding now that I'm older. Anyway, the craziest, most out-of-hand moment. My sister and I are 16 months apart in age and had a lot of the same friends in high school. When I was 14 and she was 15, our curfew was 9, but we got a summertime curfew of 10 o'clock. This was before everyone had a cell phone. Our friend was watching the time, but we got caught up in our night games. We were literally playing hide and seek. We lost track of time and realized at 5 after 10 that we were late and managed to get home by 10 after. My mom was furious and made us sit down at the kitchen table for a 30 minute lecture, during which she slammed a utensil so hard on a plate in front of my sister that glass shards flew into her face. My sister got up and left the room at that point, but when I tried to do the same, my mom put me in a headlock, like freaking WWE style, and I punched her in the back to get her to let go. My sister and I were both grounded for something like two weeks, and I got an extra week for hurting my mom. The most ridiculous punishment? My sister, at age 16, picked up smoking cigarettes. She'd been at it for a week. 
I told her it was on her own head and that it wasn't worth it and she should stop, but she kept doing it. Whatever, not my problem. She, like an idiot, pressed her luck and brought cigarettes into the house, where my mom found them in her room. Our mom would go through our stuff constantly. I literally had to hide any CD with profanity or things like permanent markers that we could get high off of. They separated us and played good cop, bad cop. My sister, again, the idiot, totally bought it when my mom told her I'd blabbed about everything and they knew the truth. I was in the other room denying any knowledge or involvement. Anyway, this happened a week before summer vacation. My sister was grounded for the entire summer vacation. Two months, no friends, no going out, 10 minutes of phone time a day, no electronics, no internet, no pool, no movie theater, nothing. My punishment? The exact same thing. For not coming to my parents and telling on my sister. My parents also decided to sand and paint the baseboards that summer and forced us to do it all. That summer was literally the worst. I spent a large portion of my teen years years being grounded for minor things, or for not being the sister spy. It sucked, especially considering I got decent if not great grades, never drank, smoked, tried drugs, had sex, skipped class, or otherwise got into any kind of trouble. I'm almost 30 and about to have my second kid, and I'm still a little salty about it. My parents tried so hard to keep us from experiencing normal teenage stuff that both me and my sister made some really poor choices once we had the tiniest amount of freedom. That's something I think a lot of parents aren't aware of, is that the harder you push, the harder they pull away. You're going to be this super strict about your kid, then yeah, the second they have some freedom, they're going to go nuts. And they don't know how to control themselves because they've never gotten to enjoy fun before. It makes sense that they're going to get a little carried away. No TV. Not as a punishment, just no TV, ever, because apparently it lets the devil in. The second I, as the last kid, moved out, they started watching TV all the time. As punishment, my dad would make us face a corner, stand on one leg, and keep both arms straight up in the air for a certain length of time. If our leg or arms went down, he'd double the time. Sometimes he'd give you a surprise visit from his belt or shoe if he was particularly angry. At least I grew up to have fantastic balance. My grandmother was a retired English teacher. One day, I called my brother stupid. I was four or so. She filled me in on her rule that if I couldn't spell stupid, but I called someone stupid, then it was really me that was stupid. Thus, I should never call someone a name that I couldn't spell. So, in my four-year-old head, rather than avoid name-calling, I realized that I did know how to spell the word dumb. So, that word must be permitted. I spent the rest of the day overusing the word dumb, and she wasn't quite sure what to do at that point. My mom gave me a black eye one night when I came home from a friend's birthday party at a skate rink. She made me tell people that I fell down and got hit in the eye by one of the wheels on a skate. I was 12. It was because I forgot to put away the dishes before I left. She also regularly broke remote controls, throwing them at me, would slam my doors open so hard the doorknobs would smash through the drywall, stole the allowance my granddad gave me, no matter where I hid it, and recently ripped a pair of my headphones out of my ears while I was using them and broke them by repeatedly whipping me in the face with them, then followed it up by punching me a few times in the face. The last instance was about four to five months ago. I moved out and she regularly contacts me demanding money. I really hope you aren't giving her any money, my friend. We weren't allowed to have food upstairs, but I had food wrappers in my trash can, so they searched my whole room, ripping clothes off hangers, throwing stuff out of drawers, etc. And for three months, I wasn't allowed in my room for anything, unless accompanied by one of them. I had to sleep on the couch. I don't understand how parents can take stuff to such an extreme and still think that they're doing right by their child. I have a literal book worth of stories of the abuse I survived through, but one time Dr. Phil's show told my mother that having a bed was a luxury for kids, so she immediately took mine away. I slept on a cold wood floor until I escaped that hellhole and cut off all contact. My dorm in college was the first real bed I'd slept in for 10 years. I didn't own a bed when I moved into my first apartment after college, so I was back on the wood floor. 
I'd moved in with the clothes on my back, my cat and her stuff, and my laptop, which I used to make money by transcribing at night, while I worked for 7 an hour, 12 hours a week at a deli. It was the only place that would hire me since I didn't have access to my own car. I cried myself to sleep every night on that wood floor. It was a reminder of how much I'd failed, leaving myself back in that position. My roommate must have heard me crying one night and figured it was back pain because they lent me an air mattress to sleep on. It was like I'd moved into a four-star hotel. Eventually, I saved up a spare 50 bucks and bought a bed off Craigslist. Sketchy, but I hadn't owned my own bed in 16 years before that. I still have the bed and refuse to part with it because I don't want to end up on the floor again. I have many chronic back problems that I don't think will ever be fixed due to being forced to sleep on the floor starting at age 7. I take pain meds when I can and do yoga, but it doesn't help. Sometimes, when I can't sleep in my normal bed, I find myself defaulting to the floor. When I wake up, I cry because I'm worried I'll always be like this. Parents have no idea how much they can mess up their kids. Ah uh, yes, Dr. Phil. Responsible for a good amount of parental abuse, I'm pretty sure. This one time, I didn't want to finish drinking my milk, so my dad threw the cup across the room, shattering it and getting milk everywhere, while he proceeded to flip my chair over while I was still in it. He then crouched over my body, saying, You want to mess with me? A bunch, and stormed out telling me to clean up the mess. And just lots more stuff like that. I once said whatever to my dad in a Bubba Gump's restaurant on vacation in Hawaii. He proceeded to scream at me and yelled at me to get out of the restaurant. I just sat there, mortified, and he left instead. I got grounded from an end of the year party when I was 11 for getting a B on a paper, even though I still got all A's. I was devastated. It was thrown by my best friend, and I was never allowed to do anything, and I'd been looking forward to it all year. I had the perfect dress to wear because my aunt's mother had taken me shopping and bought this cool dress that made me feel like Molly Ringwald. I had never been allowed to wear it before, and it had been in my closet since September. I was seriously having a Cinderella moment, although I honestly related more to Jane Erie because I was adopted and a bookworm. The day of the party comes around, and I'm bawling. I'm a good kid. I try to be perfect every waking moment. Now I'm grounded for my best friend's party. The mom of my best friend knows how tough it is at home. I'm screamed at, belittled, hit all the time. This party was a beacon. My friend's mom barges into my house, tells me to get ready and get my stuff together because I'll be spending the night. My mom protests. How about I call CPS about the 50 cats in your house? I end up going to the party and she teaches me to be a badass. I had all the usual punishments. No video games for a week, no TV for X nights, no pocket money this week, groundings, you name it, I probably had it at one point or another. One particular punishment tops the rest though for creativity and cruelty. One day I was at a friend's place with my parents and discovered that if we opened his bedroom window all the way, we could squeeze out of it and climb onto his roof. His bedroom was on the second floor of their house and they lived on top of a hill. So if we had fallen, we would have fallen probably seven to eight meters and then tumbled another 20 to 30 to the bottom of the hill. Anyway, both sets of parents walk outside at one point and hear us talking from the roof. They flip their lids and call us back inside. We scramble back into his bedroom and are sitting there terrified when our parents storm in. We get called down into the kitchen and are told to sit down at the kitchen table and await our punishment. My friend's dad opens up the pantry and starts pulling things out to make a sandwich. Then it hits us like a ton of bricks. Our punishment is to eat a sandwich made of the most ill-complimenting, grotesque food combinations that he had at his disposal. The final product ended up being an unholy blend of Vegemite, oysters, anchovies, cheese, creamed corn, raw beef mince, and hot English mustard. I actually don't recall what it tasted like, other than being awful. Looking back on it as an adult, I reckon it was just as much for their entertainment than our punishment. But damn if it wasn't creative. For me, it was always the wooden spoon. I got the wooden spoon until I was probably 15. Then, when my mom broke it over my backside because I wouldn't stop laughing, she moved to the metal one. Standing in the corner was another big one. My youngest sister got smart though and would get the corner where she could see the TV. So that was exchanged for flat walls on your knees. Malcolm in the middle style. Another weird one I got was when my sister and I wouldn't stop fighting, my mom made us sit next to each other holding hands and not speaking for hours on end. 
I couldn't drink water from my bathroom. My bathroom genuinely had colder water and the best water in the house. My mom got suspicious when I'd leave to my bathroom for a few seconds every few minutes. I don't know what she possibly thought I was doing with it, but no more bathroom water and I had to drink lukewarm peasant water like the rest of my family. This one's pretty tame, but honestly just doesn't make sense. Who cares if that's the water they want to drink? I also agree, bathroom water for whatever reason tends to be better than kitchen water. I grew up the firstborn son of an officer in the Air Force in the Bible Belt. I was an extremely inquisitive child and mentioned anything weird I found that didn't make sense in the Bible, resulting in a beating either with a belt or a wooden spoon with my pants down. I wasn't allowed to play Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or anything, as it was all satanic. So of course now I play a boatload of Japanese card games and escapist video games, listen to obnoxious screaming noises, and have a healthy interest in European occultism. Go me, I guess. Yes. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.